In the previous video, we covered checklists for packaging, where we learned about checklists to help sellers pack and ship their products better, and a formula with which a seller network participant can track damaged and returned orders and monitor the seller's performance. As the business grows, you, the seller network participant, will eventually enroll a large number of sellers, perhaps from different categories. In this video, we'll look at how seller management affects the success of your online business. We'll explore steps you need to follow to maximize return on revenue for the time you are investing, and how you can manage sellers across categories by optimizing and managing your resources in evaluating, classifying, engaging, and driving your sellers to meet their targets. The first step in seller management is to evaluate and classify sellers into different buckets. This can be done based on the seller's performance, their current scale, or their potential. When we're classifying sellers based on performance, we should evaluate their performance on the metrics like in-stock SKU, stock keeping unit, their catalog quality, how they handle their customers, and whether their orders are being cancelled or dispatched on time. There will also be a network rating for each seller to refer to. For evaluating and classifying sellers based on the current scale, we can look at the size of their sales contribution. To classify sellers based on their potential, we can measure their growth potential by seeing how well they are doing within their own categories, whether they are ready to change and improve, their past experiences and their current business size in other channels. We can also look at their grasp of digital commerce and how much they're investing in aspects such as assortment size, team size, quality, etc. The sellers can be divided into three buckets based on the above criteria. High, medium and low. After evaluating and classifying the sellers based on the mentioned criteria, the next step is to define the key objectives for driving engagement based on your goals. Category 1. High Under this, the key objectives are to prepare for the next phase of expectations, which involves 6 to 12 month planning to overcome challenges for future growth and to understand success factors which can be replicated by you with their medium classified sellers. Category 2. Medium For the medium category, the key objectives involve a three to six month plan to take the sellers to the high category. Discussing assortment planning for growth, reviewing metrics and discussions on resolutions, giving feedback and recommendations for plugging gaps in various processes, and training on best practices to move sellers into the high category. Category three, low. For sellers who are in the low category, the key objectives involve one to three months planning to raise sellers to the medium category, helping them realign their goals and expectations, giving them and their team better training, guiding them on how to define a standard operating procedure and creating checklists. If the sellers continue to fail, and there is an intent issue, then you may have to give warnings and time for improvement to the seller, post which the seller might have to be delisted. Now, let's quickly recap. In this video, we defined what seller management is, along with an explanation of the steps that you, the seller network participant, can take to evaluate and classify the sellers you wish to enroll. We also defined the key objectives for driving more engagement and improved results among each category of sellers based on a seller network participant's goals. Next up, we learn how to decide the engagement frequency across the high, medium, and low bucket of sellers. Watch our next video to learn how you can define and decide the engagement frequency to improve business and revenue.